Action scenes are a very dark form. Unlike a two character dialogue scene where you can only do the visual art so many ways. As long as there has been cinema, there has been a desire to switch up the action with every upcoming movie. Whereas Hollywood has always been on the forefront of technical breakthroughs and the Chinese industry mainly led by Jackie Chan has been physically excruciating and labor intensive. Throw the fan and coming back. More than 120 tick. Those kind of scenes. Oh, Jackie, good. Bollywood has transcended into this place of superhuman heroics that are almost parody. When Bollywood is good, it's like just any American blockbuster, but on like total steroids, because it's got this crazy, like over the top influence to it. And when it's bad, it's kind of like a really awesome high production quality, like Tim and Eric movie. Either way it goes, I love it. Now, don't get me wrong. We've always had good action. We've just never had some really gritty, realistic action. That was until the start of January 2019. I think a huge part of the success of Uri goes down to the collaboration between the director Aditya Thar and the cinematographer Mitesh Mirchandani. Now obviously the first instinct would be to attribute the action down to the actual fight performances, the stunt team, the hard work by the actors behind the scenes. But as I've said, we've already had that forever. What is different here is the ability of the camera work to shine through, to stay invisible and create an atmosphere of tension. Uri succeeds in making you grip to your seat as you watch it. And the reason behind it can be broken down into correctly using two different methods in filming the battle and the hand-to-hand -hand combat action scenes. But in order to fully understand what works in Uri, we have to understand its influences, direct or indirect, and how it did the right thing where others couldn't, and how it built on the shoulders of the best of the best. For most of us millennials and younger generations, we have seen a lot of variety of action in the past 22 years. But I think January 24th, 1998 marked a shifting point in cinema. The first 25 minutes in Saving Private Ryan, a movie directed by Steven Spielberg, changed a lot for the movies that came after it. We'll see you on the beach. Saving Private Ryan was a complete deviation from previous war movies such as The Longest Day, which was shot entirely on fixed tripods and dollies. While researching real war footage from combat documentaries such as John Huston's Report from the Aluations, William Wyler's The Memphis Bell, John Ford's Battle of Midway, and the Battle of San Pietro. Spielberg found a repetition in the way the shockwave from shelling caused the documentarians to lose control over the camera and the steadiness of the footage. This pattern he mimicked in his film along with the help of his cinematographer, Janusz Kaminski, who also utilized other techniques such as changes in the shutter speed to create an effect that mirrored in the psychological states of the characters. The technique of filming these war scenes with handheld camera with added shake that Spielberg and Kaminsky developed here since came to be known as shaky cam. The idea here was to insert the camera as a character, the documentarian, recording this while living the horror of war. The method strips away a layer of padding between the audience and the cinematic experience. No wonder the movie was hailed as the most accurate description of war by veterans, going as far as to cause PTSD syndromes in survivors of World War II. You were there. Was it like the movie showed it? Yes. Oh, yes. It, it, it was just like in the movie. Spielberg knew how to use it as a tool. One used to show emotional stability on screen. In fact, the process of adding camera shake had been in use previously, such as in the 1995 movie Seven, where Fincher used the shake to signify the inner emotional states of the characters. Notice how the camera is completely stable when it cuts to John Doe, but shaky when it cuts to the detectives. 
in good filmmaking the camera acts as an indicator of emotional stability no wonder the word emotion has the word motion in it spielberg had used the tool on steroids to elicit the emotion of horror from his audience this was how he changed everything for filming battle but in order to see how someone used this tool to change everything for hand to hand combat you have to skip to 2004 Action. Ho. But this is actually not a scene from 2004. This is from the 2002 movie The Bone Identity directed by Doug Liman. This is a scene from 2004. <laughs> Could you tell a difference? Directed by Paul Greengrass, this scene has a lot more kinetic energy and psychological aspect to it, more than the physical. And if you think you've seen something similar before, that's because you most probably have. Indeed, a movie like John Wick is a direct rebuke to the unnecessary use of shaky cam that was almost abused by the directors after Bone Supremacy came out. And that's what brings me to. When I watched Uri, I was on set pieces. The one at the start, the attack on Uri, and the surgical strike itself. Every single set piece has a distinct style to it. Whereas the one at the very start feels self-assured and much more in control, the second one feels much more harrowing. This is a good time to mention that this movie was shot on the Arri Alexa S60 using the Zeiss Master anamorphic lenses. that allowed the low light sequences and to be shot at a much wider aperture with minimum distortion leading to what i can say is probably the most intelligible night time fight scenes that retains as much of those wide angles as possible and on the complete opposite side you have the daytime sequence of the attack that utilizes much longer lenses so you can feel the claustrophobia and the individual isolation in the heat of the battle The second set piece is much more distorted. The camera makes you feel a loss of sense of control that the soldiers in the heat of the battle experienced. And that's what I would say Uri is an experience. The way the movie is shot doesn't let you be a silent observer to the tragedy or the success. There is a very strong emotional component to Uri. and that is possible because of the mastery of dhar and mirchandani on their craft where many people rely on shaky cam as a crutch they exhibit control over the guiding principles of action the result is uri not copying what came before but having originality and a distinct character to itself uri makes me happy It shows me directors can have a sensibility to shoot action scenes on wider shots, have longer cuts, and not rely on gimmicks, but rather blend the technique and the story to a point where they are one and the same.